Welcome to part two of Recent Progress in Wave Digital Audio Effects, the section on Wave Digital Filter Software Overview and Demo. So I will be giving this portion of the presentation and I will try to keep it to a reasonable length. So there are basically three sources of free Wave Digital Filter software that I am aware of. The first that I was aware of was in the Digital Audio Effects book, the second edition of the DAFX book. It contains uh, object-oriented MATLAB, which is a very nice, clean organization for Wave Digital Filters. And that inspired the second one that I became aware of, which is a collection of C++ classes that are following basically the same class structure. And uh, all we know about the poster of this is that his, he goes by MaxProd on the Juice Forum. So you can search the Juice Forum for WDF and you'll find that there are two posts. Uh, Useful Tools and Components is the section of the Juice Forum. And then third, uh, this is one that's being developed at Karma right now. Uh, it is not out yet, but we're going to put it out. Well, Max is going to put it out, and I'll tell you more about that. And it has... Um, some extensions that you just heard about, such as the R nodes in Wave Digital Filters that uh, require more general scattering. So the DAFX book MATLAB, object-oriented in the uh, object-oriented uh, MATLAB style, and here are instructions for downloading it. So this is the uh, main DAFX website, and so you can click on the upper right-hand corner and uh, uh, and, and I'll just let you look at this later. Uh, I'll just note that the license is uh, educational purposes only, not for commercial applications. So it's a, a very influential uh, piece of code, uh, but not complete. It, can, it includes the Wave Digital Capacitor and Resistor. Uh, it uses a series three-port adapter, but no parallel adapter. And it uses the binary connection tree, which is the uh, typical practice now for building wave digital filters, as you saw in Kurt's uh, talk. So left as an exercise for the reader are the parallel adapters, inductors, um, the, the nonlinearity, the diode nonlinearity uh, has a sample of delay in it, uh, but you can make those memoryless. And the voltage source in there is also a, uh, um, an instantaneous voltage source that could be adapted and uh, um, so those, those, are, uh, those are things you can find in, for example, the Wave Digital Framework, Wave Digital Filter Framework. And at that time, um, uh, Kurt had not uh, worked out the R-node scattering junction solution and the multiple nonlinearity story. So those need to be upgraded. So here's the example that was used in the DAFX uh, book. Uh, it's a diode circuit. So there's a diode here, and there's a capacitor and a resistor. And the voltage source has a 1 ohm internal resistance. And so here's the wave digital filter for that. The diode is nonlinear, so it has to go at the root. And so um, I'm, I'm sure you've seen that. And uh, the reason is because it cannot be made to have no delay. And everything else has a delay in it. So that means the resistor, for example, is adapted. Um, so the, the, the adapters here are three port scattering junctions. And so you adapt them such that there's no reflection uh, back to the root. So this little symbol here means adapted. This is an adapted port. So in a series junction, the, the uh, port impedance here will be the sum of the impedances at the other two ports. And same for this adapted port. Its impedance will be the sum of these two impedances. And that prevents, uh, that's a matched impedance uh, situation. And so you don't get a reflection from that. That's instantaneous. You, do, you get one later. So when a wave propagates down here, it will stop at this delay, and it will just go off the uh, end of this arrow and to nowhere for the resistor, and the same thing for the uh, voltage source. This is the adapted voltage source situation. And so the uh, voltage source comes in here um, without any reflection uh, interaction. The resistor puts in nothing, and the, but the capacitor has some dynamics. And so there's a sample of uh, state from the capacitor that comes and combines with what's coming in from the voltage source that has been scaled according to the resistors, and up that goes to the diode. And the diode is a nonlinear resistor, and it cannot be made uh, to have a unit sample delay, so that's why we put it at the root. And I'm um, sorry if I'm belaboring this, uh, but, but that's, that's the architecture. So anything that's instantaneous needs to be at the root, and then you adapt that to the uh, rest of the circuit using normal adapters or the uh, more general R-node scattering matrices that you uh, just heard about. So that's what we're going to build in these uh, software environments. And this is the circuit that we're simulating.
All right, so in the MATLAB case, we have this code for building the circuit. Very, very straightforward. So here's your voltage source, here's your resistor, you give it the value, and here's the capacitor value, here's the creation of the capacitor, here's the creation of a series junction, so that's the series adapter that wants to connect the voltage source and the series combination of the capacitor and the resistor. Very clear uh, code. And then we uh, have a state variable for the diode voltage that will be updated through time. Now we have our, so this is actually all it takes to build the circuit. It's a nice high level form. And then in the simulation loop, uh, you have another uh, very nice high level form. The input signal to your um, network is your voltage source. And so that just comes in here. And then you, you then propagate waves. So the way you propagate the waves is you first go up from the leaves of the tree and then you bounce off the diode and then you go back down the tree. So over here is what I described earlier. So first you evaluate um, all your capacitors and inductors have a state of delay and all your resistors contribute nothing because they're all matched. They're all adapted so there's no reflection from any of them. And the same thing for the voltage sources resistor over here. So you now, you, so you pull nothing from those um, but you combine the voltage with what's coming out of the capacitor and that goes up. And so that's, that's that step. Uh, the wave up step produces this variable right here. Then you need to calculate what happens with the diode. Here is now the uh, calculation of the effective resistance of the diode, and then we scatter off of that, and that's an instantaneous uh, so-called non-adapted scattering, and that gives us the wave that's going to head back down the tray, and that, that will then propagate into all of the leaf nodes, and in the capacitor it'll stop here, in the resistor it'll just go away, and in an inductor it would also stop in a delay and then have a, a, a minus sign there. So that's wave digital filters, how they look, how they behave. All right, so that was MATLAB. Now here's the same thing in C++. And it's also in a JUICE framework, which as you probably know, is uh, a nice uh, environment for creating plugins of a variety of types. So uh, it was inspired by the Defix book. It's even using the same example in a similar class structure. And here are some URLs to it. And you can just search for it on the JUICE forum. So uh, it runs right away on Mac OS X. Um, I needed to change the build settings to 10.9 instead of 10.10 10 .10, uh, because there was a point class that was not defined. Uh, you should be able to compile it for Linux, for AU plugins, VST plugins. That's all thanks to Juice. And it's got the same basic uh, hierarchical object-oriented class structure that was in the MATLAB for the DAFX book. So one nice thing, though, about C++ is that it's suitable for real-time deployment. MATLAB is not going to run fast enough uh, in a real-time plugin, so you, you want to have these C++ classes for that. But it also is not up to date on you know the latest things that you just heard from Kurt. Here is the Defix uh, uh, example that, that we saw before, same thing. And now we're going to implement it in uh, C++. So here is uh, the basic uh, building of the circuit. It looks about the same. Here's the simulation loop. It looks about the same. Um, I'll just mention that uh, it's got the same uh, delay at, at the diode that, that you can get rid of using the other techniques you've already heard about. <clears throat> and uh, the voltage source has similarly uh, uh, got a reflection that's instantaneous. So uh, let's just move along. We are out of time. I just want to talk about, you can download these um, uh, overheads and, and look at them in detail. But I want to keep this short and just mention the uh, Wave Digital Filter Framework and give you a quick demo. So coming soon is the Wave Digital Filter Framework. It's in C++ as well. Uh, but it's got these more um, uh, you know, up-to-date extensions and uh, improvements such as you know, instantaneous uh, root nodes and uh, voltage sources and so on. So it's written in C++. Um, uh, Maximilian Rest from TU Berlin has been doing most of the work. He's been writing the code. Ross Dunkel has been uh, helping him. He's an MAMST student at Karma. And so there's support for general R node scattering matrices. And so uh, that's coming. That's on the way. So the uh, the software follows a similar pattern, but there are these extensions such as the RNet. So here is the uh, scattering matrix support. Here's the implementation of it. So here is a, a general n by n scattering matrix being applied to the incoming waves and outgoing waves go out. And then finally a demo. Okay, so the Tube Screamer is a stomp box used by guitar players to distort their sound and here is a uh, schematic of it. Um, so you have an input buffer, uh, which we don't need to implement. And then here is the distortion unit. So it's an op-amp with some 
uh, diodes in the feedback loop. There's also a capacitor here, and there's a variable resistor that's your drive resistor. And then you have a tone stage, and so you can adjust the tone and volume here. And then you have an output buffer and uh, some control stuff. So you really want to just implement these things. So we're going to have a wave digital filter for the uh, nonlinearity um, uh, in, inside of a filter and an op-amp filter. And we're going to have um, tone, tone stage. So this is what it looks like physically. And uh, implemented as a wave digital filter in C++ on an iPad 3 requires about 12% of the CPU at the normal 44.1 kilohertz sampling rate. So it's a relatively expensive effect, but it's pretty good because you're getting all this circuitry emulated very, very well at a very high audio sampling rate without any iterative uh, solution. It's just you know a, a blazing fast implementation of, uh, of the circuit digitized by the bilinear transform using the wave digital filter principles. So let's hear it um, on the GeoShred app. Okay, here is a demonstration of a wave digital filter for the tube screamer running in real time on this app called GeoShred, uh, which is going to be submitted on Wednesday to the App Store. It has a virtual guitar and a bunch of guitar effects kinds of things. So now let's make a new patch and call it T for tube screamer and then get into the patch and add an effect which is this guy, which is the teach screamer. And so you can bring up this inspector and you can play with the drive parameter. So let's bypass it first. So here's the bare guitar. And now we put on the drive. Here we can exercise the parameters. It's a low drive. drive. Add the tone. So there you have it. Real-time wave digital filter running um, about 12% of an iPad 3. Okay, so that was the live demo of the Tube Screamer Wave Digital Filter. So, in conclusion, I uh, just want to mention that Wave Digital Filters have been uh, turned out to be a very good choice for accurate real-time digital modeling of analog audio effects. The computation, computational performance and accuracy are very competitive with other uh, approaches. The C++ hierarchy, as we saw, is a very clear, natural choice of software organization. And the binary connection tree makes it possible to get by with nothing but three port adapters. But also, as you've seen, um, in some situations, you need more general scattering matrices for the so called R type nodes, such as bridge circuits. And that um, works out just fine in the software, as you saw in the Wave Digital Filter Frameworks example. So, uh, that is the demonstration software overview and demo.